All right, we're continuing our survey of some of the figures of speech that are used in the Bible. This will help us to better interpret the Bible as good literature. Uh, so the one we have today, the figures of, figure of speech that we're talking about today, is hyperbole. If you remember, our definition of figure of speech is an intentional deviation from ordinary language to produce a rhetorical effect. A rhetorical effect, effect is to move emotionally the reader. Uh, so uh, the author is trying to leave ordinary descriptive language and trying to create a better emotional response uh, than he could have from using that simple descriptive language. So here is hyperbole. All right, our definition of hyperbole is here extravagant or exaggerated statements to make a point or to show empathy or emphasis. So it's not a thing that you would take literally, but instead you know the person is exaggerating, uh, but the way that they're exaggerating underscores a truth that they're meaning to convey. So we'll check that out. Here's a here's an example. This is from Deuteronomy 128. The verse says, the cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Now here's the idea. Uh, this is the report of the spies. It's an embarrassing report because they won't trust God. They go into the promised land. They look around at what God has said he would give them, but instead all they can see are the giants in the land and the fortified cities. And this says they're fortified and the, the spies say they're fortified up to heaven, which means that uh, they think they're impregnable. So the intention is the spies wish to emphasize the futility of taking the promised land. And so they exaggerate how tall these walls are all the way up to heaven. All right, so that's Deuteronomy 128. You see how they use the hyperbole? It was used by the spies to convince the people of Israel they shouldn't do and claim what God has promised. Here's another one from 1 Kings 140. Uh, 1 Kings 140 says, And all the people went up after him, um, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split by their noise. So this is talking about uh, the accession of Solomon to king in place of David. And so everybody is celebrating that the David's son is now securely on the throne. And it underscores that once in a lifetime uh, celebration by saying that the earth was split by their noise. Uh, makes me think of, uh, <laughs> there was a concert from Taylor Swift that actually measured on the Richter scale. Um, so maybe this is, uh, this is possible, but I think it's hyperbole in 1 Kings 140. All right, let's, uh, let's look at another example if we can. This is from Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 1. The verse says, He has cast down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. You see the distance, the whole of the splendor of Israel has been cast down in that incredible merism from all the way from heaven to earth. Uh, but the intention is uh, to picture the completeness of Israel's humiliation because of God's judgment. Uh, because they didn't obey, they were put into judgment, and God cast them down in utter humiliation. From heaven to earth, they cast down the splendor of Israel. So there we are. Uh, here's one from the New Testament, one that Jesus used. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. All right, so this is an intentional exaggeration that you could speak to a mountain and tell it to be uprooted and go be thrown in the sea. Um, but uh, as C.S. Lewis says, um, we shouldn't just assume then that once we've identified it as hyperbole, that God, that therefore we've solved the promise. The promise is something incredible. Jesus intends to underscore the miraculous things that can happen through faith and prayer. So no geographical disturbances here are necessary, uh, but good things, useful things, God intervening things, now those would be what this is really a promise all about. So see how we learning about hyperbole can help us to picture what promises God might intend. All right, if you would like to read more about figures of speech used in the Bible, the classical example is E.W. Bullinger. Um, and then 
Uh, Leland Riken does an excellent job of helping us to understand the Bible as literature. So, talk to you again soon. Thanks for joining me.